Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. Although we saw in the previous example of calling a function, let's just formalize this now and discuss a little bit about calling a function. What we learned in the previous tutorial is that if we don't actually supply or if we don't actually call the function, the function will not be run by Python when we execute the code. Because this code here is we can describe as encapsulated within this function here. And this can only be accessed um, via calling this function name. In fact, we may already be familiar with the idea of calling a function because that's what we had to do when we utilize the Python built-in functions. We couldn't run a built-in function if we didn't actually ask to run it. So it's the same in a principle here. Even though we're defining our own functions, we need to call it. So here in this example, we have a function name and then we call the function and pass in the arguments one and two. Really, I'm just emphasizing the point again. I know that we're covering the same and we're repeating ourselves, but hopefully that is a, a good method to help us remember all the different rules. So this is an example here. So notice here that when we call the function at the top here, name one and two, and we are calling the function, we are passing in the correct arguments. So we expect we have to find two parameters here and we're passing in two arguments into our function. But because we're calling the function before Python has read or seen the function, then this function will not work. So let's go back to our example here, our calculation example. Let's go ahead and print and just uh, fire off this function here. We saw that it works absolutely fine. So we pass in two numbers, we add them together. Now notice here, if I were to try and call this function before it's been declared, you can see that we get a name error. Calculation is not defined. So what's happening here is that Python is running this code from the top. It's trying to run calculation, but it hasn't read the fact that calculation exists yet. So therefore there is an error. So that's a name error. So we need to make sure that before we actually run or before we actually call a function, that the function has been declared and within the code, it's actually um, before the call. So the function needs to be before the actual function call. So let's also remember that we need to make sure that we define the correct amount of arguments, whether it be zero, none at all, or many. So here we've defined two parameters that this function is expecting. And here we are passing in when we call the function, we are utilizing or supplying those two arguments. So we can see that in action. So let's just go for, for example, the one. Now notice here that we've referenced A and B from our parameter list here. Now remember what I said that essentially this is going to build a, a variable that can be utilized within our function here. So if we were to try to run this, you can see that B has not been defined here. Of course we can define B, B equals 10. Let's go for that. And that would then run absolutely fine. So hopefully you can start to feel this idea of these parameters then get turned into essentially variables which we can utilize within our code. And we can define as many or none at all arguments, supply multiple or no arguments at all inside of our function, depending on what we've declared here in the parameter list. So this example here, so let's just go for something similar like that. And there we go. So let's now just recap what we learned previously regarding doc strings. So the concept of doc string, it allowed us to create some documentation, in this case, within our function. 
And then that can be utilized um, as a way of gaining information about our function, recording what the function does potentially or what the function is for. So let's go ahead and create our doc string for this calculation. So do um, observe the indentation here. So our doc string is going to start with the triple doubles and then calculate, we're just going to say calculate two numbers. And then we finish with the triples. Okay, so that's our doc string in place. We have already discussed a little bit about the doc string and how we can convert that into documentation at the start of this course. But let's just utilize this in a slightly different way. So the scenario is that you know how to access the function and you just want to know what the function does. You want to access this doc string, which should provide you more information about this particular function. Now, remember, this is a, the basics of what you might include in a doc string, but the doc string might be quite a large component of your function. It might include what it's for, what it does, um, what parameters need to be passed in, what can be done within the function, what output the function will provide. So there's a whole bunch of information that we can be included. If you go over to the Django documentation, it does provide some indication as to what to include in your doc string. So I'll take you to do that again. So here in the Django documentation, when you're looking for the Django admin documentation generator. Again, we did go through that process at the start of this course. And inside of here, it does give you some information as to how to display or what to include within your doc string. In addition to that, you can have a look at the Python documentation, which also provides you some additional information of what to potentially include. Ultimately, these are just templates and it's entirely up to you how you format and what you include within your doc string. So far on this course, we have been utilizing the terminal to output from a file here that we're developing with Python code. So we can run Python code, we can type and run Python code within a Python shell. So if you're on Windows, you're going to type in Py. If you're on Mac here, I'm going to type in Python 3, and that takes you to a Python terminal. And here I can just type in some code and it will execute the code. So what we can do here, if I just clear that, what we can do here is we can import these resources. So we're going to import this function and then we're going to output the doc string. So let me just show you an example of it. So here I'm in the triple right chevrons. So I'm in the Python interpreter here. So I can type in from and from example, let's import a uh, calculation. A calculation. Okay, so I import and make this resource available so I can access it. So I can just now type in calculation here and I can access the function. So what I can now do is I can use the Python help tool to then output information about the function. So calculation. Okay, so I can output, you can see here, this is the doc string. Obviously, this might include more information and that should give us some information or more information about that particular function. Of course, I could just go to the, the file where the actual code is, but that's just a, something that you could potentially use to output information about particular functions. And we can utilize this for any of the built-in functions. So if I press Q here to quit, that takes me back into the Python terminal shell. So here I can type in help, and then let's go for the print function. So here's information about the print function. So what you might find here is that you scroll down, it gives you more information. And like I said, you can press Q to take you back to the command line. 